take our Bibles and turn to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians number 6, chapter 6, and we'll begin reading at verse number 10. And I want to share with you a message this morning, wrestling, one on one, one on one. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity this morning uh, to share the Word of God with your church. And I do pray, God, that you would uh, just speak to every heart. Lord, you know us. You know them that are that belong to you, those that have been saved. And Lord, if there's some here this morning that are not saved, you know that as well. And we pray, God, if there is any here that are lost, that you would allow your Spirit to convince them of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Lord, that you would draw them in this very service uh, to Christ and to salvation. Or without your Spirit, they cannot come. And we ask you, Father, uh, for what Jesus did on the cross, that you'd have mercy upon the unsaved, and that you'd stir their heart, and that you'd help them this morning to come to Christ, that they might be saved. And Father, for those that are saved, that know you, that are struggling, Lord, would you use this word to encourage them? Or would you show them the danger that is before them, but also, God, the hope that's in Christ? And would you challenge them, God, concerning their own personal relationship with you, or that they might be more uh, sober, more vigilant, or that they might be aware and awake, and Lord, that they might be ready that when Satan comes, they could resist him steadfast in the faith. I pray, God, that your will would be accomplished this morning and that you would be glorified. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. When I was in the 8th grade, I joined a wrestling team. Anybody ever been a part of a wrestling team? Oh, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> wrestling is not like you see on TV. It's not the WWE or what is it now, WW something. And uh, you're jumping off rings and stuff. It's uh, you and a single opponent. It's just you and another individual in a match. And you square off and you go at it to see who can get control of the other. Uh, I don't know how many of you watch any MMA sports. All right. (laughs) It's something like that without the punching. Now the difference between the WWE and the MMA is when they get punched, you see the bruises and the cut. (laughs) And the other one, you don't see them at all. So that might give an indication of which one's real and which one... It's not quite so real. 
But that's a, a difficult sport. That's a sport that's exhausting. Uh, you may have watched an MMA fight at the end of that fight. Uh, they might have had to carry that person out in a stretcher. I mean, they have given everything. They're exhausted to the core. Uh, I enjoy playing sports, when, I, especially when I was younger, before my accident. I enjoy playing football and basketball and baseball and any other kind of ball, war ball, kickball. I just like it all. Uh, but I found it, uh, it very physically challenging uh, to, to train in wrestling. Uh, we'd get in there and they would teach us different holds, different moves. Um, I'm glad that I, I went through that because it taught me a, lot, a little bit about how to defend myself. Uh, but it was difficult, hard training. You're usually trying to defeat another opponent. Well, Paul uses these similar terms. Back in the Olympic days, they had wrestling, not like the wrestling that we're familiar with today, but they had wrestling back in those days. You know Paul used a lot of those uh, athletic terms. He talks about running and winning a race. Many other... Uh, Paul uses those Olympic games to say, listen, that, uh, uh, the Christian life can be uh, uh, similar to that. Let me teach you some lessons about how to train to run a race. Well, here he's using wrestling as a lesson for our spiritual combat. We've got an enemy and we've got to oppose that enemy. We've got to resist that enemy. We've got to defeat that enemy. And so Paul uses these terms to help us to understand what it's like to resist evil and wickedness and sin in the world. And so I want you to Notice, first of all, it's a personal match. It's a personal match. Did you hear these terms Paul uses? He says in verse number 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. He's talking to the Ephesian believers. He's talking to the church. And he said, I want you to put on the armor so that ye, you, as a church, as Christians, can stand against the evil of your day and against the evil one himself. And then in the very next verse, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, I want you to know that I have this same battle myself. I have to go in the ring with uh, Satan, with evil forces, all the time and I'm resisting, and I'm fighting, and I'm trying to conquer them, and they're trying to conquer me. You're going to have to fight the fight. I'm fighting the fight. And then notice how personally he makes it in the next verse. He said, Wherefore, verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God. He's saying, Now that's, that's armor that you, as an individual, have to put on yourself. You've got to put the helmet of salvation on. Nobody can put that helmet on for you. You have to belt yourself with truth. Nobody else in this world is going to put the belt of truth around you. You have to gird yourself up. You have to have the breastplate of righteousness. All these instruments, all these pieces of armor... Paul said, you have to put them on. And I want to remind you, that's the essence of the Christian life. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm glad we have help, aren't you? I'm glad we have the church, right? Um, when I was uh, going into my wrestling training, I'm glad we had coaches there that knew how to teach us to do certain moves that would get you to pin the opponent. I enjoyed learning that. Amen. And if you do this, and you catch them this way, they're done for. My brother Rodney that's uh, battling with COVID now, he was extremely good at it. And so he wasn't a full year older than I am. He's not. And so sometimes he practiced his moves on me. <laughs> I think that's why he got so good at it. Uh, but he enjoyed doing that. He enjoyed getting that uh, opponent in a position where he could conquer him and he could win that, uh, uh, that match. Yes. Yes. 
You know, he could, he was the only one that could fight that opponent. I, I when we were in the uh, when I was younger, uh, Dad, there's seven of us kids, and Dad always taught us to defend one another. Anybody else have family like that? And when we lived in Panama City, my brother, my oldest brother Mike, got in a fight. And him and this other guy was going at it. And I'm on the sideline, and I'm thinking, oh, don't look like he's doing too good. Oh, he's over. And before you know it, Brother John, I jumped right in the middle of him. <laughs> it's two on one instead of one on one. Well, my older brother didn't like that too much. <laughs> Later on, he said, don't you ever jump. When I'm fighting, <laughs> so I never did again. But you know what? When it comes to salvation, you're the only one that can be saved. Nobody can ever get saved for you. Amen. You have to choose Christ. If you're not saved, listen to me. It's because you have rejected Christ. If you're ever going to be saved, you have to bend the knee and say, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you're buried and that you rose again and I trust you as my Savior. And you have to ask Jesus. You have to call upon the name of the Lord in order for Him to save you. Isn't that right? Well, when it comes to the Christian life, you also have to remember that it is a personal battle. Nobody can resist evil for you. Nobody can resist temptation for you. Nobody can push back on the wicked forces of our day for you. You have to learn to stand, and you have to learn to fight, and you have to learn to wrestle. Amen. And if you don't put on this armor, guess what? You will be defeated. Amen. Right? So. Now, I'm glad for helpers, aren't you? The church is like a coach. Now, he can't get in the mat with you. He can't fight the opponent with you. But he can sure shout instructions. <laughs> Watch out! Right. Oh, his left leg's open. Yeah. Grab him around the shoulder. You almost got him. Yeah. And before you get on that mat, guess what he can do? In, in training, he said, now listen, when this happens, you need to do this. Yeah. Do you realize church services are... That kind of instruction for you. This, this today, you go to church, and the Word of God's been opened, and He's instructed you to put on the whole armor of God, and now you've got a choice. Either you can listen to the coach and go home and say, you know what, this is the armor I need. I need the helmet of salvation. I need the sword of the Spirit. And you say, preacher, where can I go buy that? You can't buy it at a Christian bookstore. Every piece of armor you need is found in the Word of God. Amen. You want truth? Here's where you're going to find truth. You want to understand what righteousness is? What right living is? You better not listen to the world to try to find out what right living is, right? Because they change their mind all the time. You need to go to the unchanging Word of God and find out what's right and wrong. Amen? Amen. And until you do that yourself, you're not going to be fit to stand against the evil forces of our day. I don't know how many times pastors and teachers have said to us Christians, listen, read your Bible and pray. Spend some time with God. And you know what happens sadly? The majority of the time people leave church, they go home, take this Bible, lay it down somewhere, and they can't find it come church time. You're going to have to learn this is a personal battle between you and evil forces. And by the way, your opponent is always ready to engage. Isn't that true? Amen. What does it say about us in 1 Peter 5? Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Why do I have to be alert and awake and aware and anticipating all the time? Because Satan as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. You may not be preparing to fight him, but I can guarantee you something. He is certainly preparing to fight you. And if you think you can fight him unprepared and win, he's going to pin you in a heartbeat. Amen? I'm trying to say to you this morning, you have to choose to follow Christ. When I was a young uh, Christian, my pastor said to me, he said, Tommy, you need to memorize Scripture. 
He said, and now when you memorize Scripture, don't make the mistake I made. Because when I memorized Scripture, I didn't memorize the reference. Don't make the same mistake I made, Tom. He said, I want you to memorize a reference when you memorize a passage of Scripture. So, I always memorize the reference when I memorize a passage of Scripture. Always. And I don't know how many times someone said, where's that verse found? And I said, found here, and right, this is where it's at. Chapter 3 and verse number 4. And I said, Pre- how do you do that, preacher? Because I listened to my teacher, my coach, and I followed his instructions, and it prepared me to serve God and fight Satan. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, church service is not just about coming to a building, listening to a sermon, and going home. It's trying to get you ready for a conflict, a battle, that you need to start <coughs> engaging yourself and realizing, listen, Satan will come against me and I have to have the strength of Christ to resist that enemy that's going to attack me. Glory to God. Right? Amen. So you need the coach to help train you. But it's also good to have Christians cheering for you. Amen. Isn't that good? I mean, you're out there and you're about ready to let him pin you. Right? Brother John said, Tommy, don't, don't forget it. Don't let him pin you. No, fight him. It's two more seconds. Hold on. It's good to get cheer, cheered from the saints, isn't it? Amen. Remember, that's why we come to church. To, to cheer one another, encourage one another, support one another, strengthen one another. Amen? That's our job. That's our duty. But guess what? We still can't get on the mat, will you? If we could, we would. Right? I can go to prayer for you. I can counsel you. I can give you instruction. I can cheer for you. But you're going to have to be the one that pushes back against the enemy. And you're going to have to resist him. And you're going to have to say, No, Satan, I'm not going to let you win this battle. Amen? Amen. It's a personal battle, but it's also a powerful battle. In other words, it's not just you know, Sunday school, kindergarten. I mean, you read what he's been saying here. He's saying, listen, you're in a death match. You're not just out there wrestling to win some kind of prize, a gold medal. There's a lot at stake. And this is a serious battle. And by the way, that's how it is with you and Satan. Remember? Jesus said, I want to tell you about the enemy. What does he do? He comes not but for two. It's the only reason he comes, John 10, right? I mean, he doesn't come to bless you. He doesn't come to help you. He comes not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. Remember when he looked at Peter, that is, Satan looked at Peter and he said, I'm going to get him and I'm going to shred him to pieces and I'm going to leave nothing but just the husk left. And Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that when you're converted that you'd strengthen the brethren. Satan has set his eye on you and he wants to leave you with nothing, an empty shell. And boy, he got Peter close to that, didn't he? My pastor reminded me again recently in services with him. In John 21, Peter said, I'll go fishing. And what he was saying is, I'm going back to the business of fishing. I'm getting out of the ministry. I'm getting out of this teaching and preaching stuff. I know how to catch fish. I'm going back to fishing. Satan had him pretty close, didn't he? Hmm? It's a powerful struggle. You, you've got an experienced adversary that's well trained in what he does. Think about that. I mean, how, how powerful is it? He was in heaven, Lucifer, and he got a third of the angels to follow him, rebel from heaven in the presence of God. How in the world did he accomplish that? 
Now, if he could deceive a third part of the angels, don't you think that maybe you and I better check up on our spiritual life and get ready to stand and put some armor on and realize I'm in a serious battle here? Adam and Eve, everything was perfect. Right? There was no sin in the world. And then all of a sudden, Satan slithered in the garden. Right? And he deceives them in such a subtle way. And then they fall into sin and they take the human race with them. And some of the giants of the Bible, man, he just went through them like they were nothing. Isn't that true? The Bible says there's a man in the Bible that talks about this man that he had a heart for God. That means he loved God. He wanted to please God. You read some of the psalms that he wrote. He was a worshiper. He, David knew how to worship. Amen? And yet, you see his story, how Satan just comes in, and when David is not prepared and not ready, he just eats his lunch. Before you know it, David is in bed with some woman that's not even his wife. And then to cover up that sin, what does he do? He has her husband killed on the battlefield. How can such a great Christian mind, Christian man, get in this situation? He wasn't putting the armor on. He didn't realize it was a deadly conflict. He wasn't living life like Satan is trying to ruin my testimony. He is trying to destroy my children. He's trying to destroy everything I have done for God. He wasn't living that way, was he? He was up in his palace just kind of going through life in a leisurely manner. And that's when Satan came in and really hurt him. I want you to, I want you to understand something. You're in a one-on-one -on -one match with evil forces. Those evil forces have just ruined, ruined nations, ruined people, ruined families. In other words, on your own, you're no match for Him. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Realize you've got an adversary, and He's talking here in war terms, right? It, it is a serious battle. It's a powerful struggle. You want to get a picture of what it kind of looks like? Look at Jesus in the garden and He's taking on the sin of mankind and He's pouring great drops of sweat, as it were, blood, agonizing. That's the kind of battle that you're in. You're not aware of that, but that's exactly the kind of battle you're in against the evil forces of our day. And can I also say this to you this morning? It is a persistent battle. It, it goes on and on and on. I've told you all this before and you've chuckled and you have a right to chuckle. I, I, I was being foolish as a young Christian but the night I got saved I thought, okay, that's the end of sin now. I don't have to worry about sin anymore. In fact, that's why I was saved. Because I didn't want anything to do with sin anymore. And then I thought, well, John, I got saved. Whew. And it wasn't long until I realized that that's not what that means you're still going to have to fight against sin. And then I thought, well, God's called me to preach. You know, preachers, they've got this kind of special power. You know, they got a high calling. So maybe they have, you know, a little bit more help when it comes to fighting against the devil. And I thought, well, maybe it's going to change now since I've been called to preach. It changed. <laughs> it changed for the worse. <laughs> if I'd known that, I might have run. <laughs> Instead of running to it, I might have run away from it. But what I'm trying to say to you, there's never a period in your life as a born-again Christian that you can kind of just say, okay, I've reached that place now that I can just defeat the devil and he's no match for me. That does not happen. Have you seen some people who live for God their entire life and then they got to the very end and it's like they lost their mind or something? 
went out and committed adultery or just got involved in wickedness and sin. You know, how, how can that happen? You've lived your whole life for God and now you're going to end like this? You're going to end with this staining your testimony? Have you seen that before? I've seen that. You know what they thought? They thought, well, I've defeated the devil enough now. I think I, I, think I can finally just coast for a little bit. I, I want you all to understand something. You're going to fight him. Listen to me. You're going to fight him as a single person. You think marriage is going to cause all the sexual temptations just to dissipate? I'm telling you, you're going to have to resist him as a single person. You're going to have to resist him as a married person. Listen, you're going to have to resist him when you have children. Some people say, well, you know, if we can just have kids... Does that solve all the problems when you have kids? Guess what? It does. It adds a few more. <laughs> it's a worthy addition. It's a worthy addition. Yes, it's good. But there's more problems there. You think, well, maybe when the children grow up and they get out on their own, does temptation and problems with evil and wickedness stop when that happens? No, it doesn't. It doesn't stop. I'm saying to you, as long as you're in this world, are you listening? As long as you're in this world, you're going to have to realize you've got an enemy, an adversary, and he's going to do his best to cut your feet from out from underneath you and pin you, and you're going to have to fight him and fight him and fight him and fight him until God calls you home, and then the battle's over. I think you're going to reach a point in this life that Satan's going to back up. He's going to do his best to continue to pursue you until he tries to catch you at an advantage where he can defeat you. Amen? Amen. It is a personal battle. And I wish somehow you'd take this and say, you know, preacher, I need to get ready for that battle. <laughs> Sunday we were with Brother Otis in worship service and he said, all right, Wednesday night, we are going to quote the Beatitudes. And I thought, Brenda, are we visiting a different church? <laughs> and you know, I know, I know my father-in-law. I know if I wasn't ready to quote the Beatitudes, he'd have said, all right, Tommy, you're first, come on. <laughs> so guess what I'm doing? I'm... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Brenda, was that right? And she'd say hers, and I'd say mine back, and we, we worked on it. <laughs> I didn't want to get there and be unprepared. Guess how I was going to be able to quote those verses and not miss a word. I had to take the time to look at it and go over it and go over it and go over it. And make sure I had it right. Amen. So when Wednesday night came, I could quote those passages and, and not mess them up. Amen. I, I want to use it just as an illustration because you have to take that book home yourself and you have to open it up and you have to do some memorization work. You have to get along with God in prayer. We can pray for you. We can encourage you. But growing up in Christ is more than just showing up at church. You're never going to be able to fight off the devil until you finally take what's being said, go home, open up this Bible, and start meditating on it, spending time with Christ, and learning more about Jesus. Amen? That's the only way you're going to be able to fight against the enemy. And by the way, there's a lot more at stake than what you're, what you're probably thinking. That's a deadly match. Yes, it is. He, 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 listen to me. I try to tell parents. I told uh, a, young, a couple just the other day, yesterday, have three little children. I said, you need to be bringing those kids to church. They're four years old. One, they're two of them, they're twins. Two of them is four years old. And then they got one that's uh, just a little over a year old. I said, you need to be taking those kids to church. I said, listen, if you take them to church, they'll learn. I have to obey Mama because God wants me to. 
I have to do good around the home because God wants me to. I said, it'll help you raise your children right if you'll take them to church. And I said, but on top of that, listen to me, when they grow up, if you've not brought them to Christ and they have children, what do you think they're going to teach their children? Did you get me on that? You didn't, you didn't bring them to Christ yourself. And then when they have kids, you think they're going to be mindful of their children's need of coming to Christ? No. That means your children and your grandchildren and maybe even your great-grandchildren are lost and will spend eternity in hell. That's how serious it is. Amen? Amen. But if you'd bring those kids to Christ and you'd help train them in the way of the Lord, guess what? Then they'd train their children in the way of the Lord. How are we going to change America? That's the way you change America. By you loving Christ yourself and you teaching your children to love Christ. Amen? There's a lot more at stake. Just think about hell. Think about eternity. There's a lot at stake. Amen? Amen? And it's always going to be a fight. My, my father-in-law said this. And I'll, I'll say this in closing. He said, you know what? You're always going to be fighting. <laughs> you're either going to be fighting against the devil or you're going to be fighting against Christ. Right. Isn't that true? Christ is going to say, come, come, be saved. Surrender your life. And you're going to say, no, no, I don't want that. And by the way, that's insanity, right? right. Because all he's trying to do is keep you out of hell. And keep you from ruining your life and the lives of a lot of other people. He's trying to help you. Either you're going to be resisting Christ or you're going to be resisting Satan. Amen? And I'd much rather be on the team that resists evil than the team that's resisting Christ and eternal things. Don't you? If you're not saved, come to Jesus this morning. <laughs> Get on the right team. Amen? Accept Him as your Lord and your Savior. And remember this, you've got an enemy that you need to be resisting. And so learn. Go to church not just to hear a sermon. Go to church to learn about Christ and learn what to study and to memorize and how to pray and how to resist the devil. Amen? Because I promise you, He's coming. Whether you're ready or not, He's coming. Amen? And I just want to implore you this morning, get ready. Would you do that? Let's stand for prayer. Father, thank you for this Lord's Day and an opportunity to share your word. And I pray you'd help us. Lord, help us to realize that there is a, a personal battle. Every one of us will step in that ring. Some of us are in that ring today. And Satan's already uh, trying to do his best to pin us. And I pray, Father, that you'd help us to resist him steadfast in the faith would help us to have the armor on or truth and righteousness and the shield of faith the helmet of salvation feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Lord, all these instruments can be found only in their word Lord, please challenge Christians this morning to, to take the Bible home and do more with it than just have it hold paper down on the desk. God, challenge them to open it up and read it. God, speak to their heart. Many who are here today could memorize the Beatitudes. That's a great little passage for all of us to say, you know what, I can work on that and memorize that. Lord, I pray you challenge those that are here that may be lost. Draw them to Christ this morning challenge Christians to come and kneel in this altar and say, Lord, help me. I, I have to get in the ring with uh, Satan, the enemy, the evil forces, and I'm not ready. Lord, help me to train and get ready so that I can fight the good fight of faith. Lord, have your way in this invitation. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things. Amen.